So this is first update in quite a while. Uh, this one's not to do with the Jaguar app or any of the Canvas stuff. This one is around running Apple CarPlay on a Raspberry Pi. Um, most other projects that I've seen doing this, it's just running uh, an Android app on Android running on top of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, this one's actually running on Raspberry OS, so kind of running natively to the Raspberry Pi. One thing you will need is a car link adapter. So this is the one that I got. I'll leave a link to it. Um, 60 pounds you can get it for if you just put this voucher on. Um, but it does make it a lot easier to do. I don't think there's been any kind of integration without using one of these. I know the Open Auto Pro one also uses these. Um, I think that's probably going to be the only way you can do it. It does also support wireless, which I've kind of had working. Um, it's not fully integrated yet, but it's something that should be should be part of the project soon. So to get it working, first thing you have to do is come to the React CarPlay repo. Once you're at the repo, just scroll down towards the bottom. I think on a desktop screen it's over on the right, but there should be a releases link. So if you click that. There's then an assets drop down and then within here there's two app images. So the bottom one's for Ubuntu. Um, runs pretty well on Ubuntu. That one's tried and tested. So if you're running it that way, you'd click that one. If you're running it on an ARM V7L CPU, which is the Raspberry Pi, then you click the top one at the top. So we'll just click on that and download it. I've had to make the screen quite small to kind of mimic the same resolution that we'd get on the touch screens. The uh, main reason for that is that at the moment the app's quite CPU heavy. So going much bigger than that you kind of have to lower the quality settings. Um, hopefully in the future we'll have hardware acceleration properly working in the app. But for now it's best keeping it on a smaller screen. Which considering everyone uses the touch screens isn't really an issue at the moment. So once it's downloaded open up the downloads folder, we'll go open a terminal in the downloads folder once we're in it we can make the file executable first so chmod plus x and then the file name and then to run it we just gotta go sudo forward slash and then the file name then importantly at the end you've got to do two hyphens and then no and hyphen and then sandbox it should run. First time you run it, it'll take quite a while because it has to download quite a few files that are part of the Android APK. So it'll run through, download those, and then it should start up. They're downloaded, so make sure your dongle's plugged in. If we click on the Electron app at the back, it should just be loading up now. There is a little bug in there every now and then when sometimes it won't load up straight away. Um, and then you have to unplug your phone and plug it back in. Um, but it only takes a, a couple of seconds. So audio is working. So if I switch my speakers on that are plugged into the Raspberry Pi. And then click around, you can scroll. I'm doing this through VNC, so it's a little bit laggy at the moment. Um, not much at all, um, but that's mainly where I'm going through VNC with a mouse. Um, and then, yeah, that's it pretty much working. So, on this one, I think I've got Google Maps on there. You can scroll through, you can do all of your bits. Siri's working. Um, extra bit of work doing that because of the audio is at a different bit rate to the music coming out of the, the iPhone um, but it's all in there and it's all integrated and working so if we close that down if all you want to do is just run that um, then that's all you need but there, I have made a couple of extra packages which will help people who, who want to develop their own apps um, so if we go to my repo, or all of my repos, in one of these, 
got too many now to find them. If we look, look at them all. And then we've got a Node CarPlay one here as well. So the Node CarPlay, it doesn't give you any visual interface. This is an NPM package. Um, it's on the NPM webpage. So if you want to use it, you can just do a um, NPM install Node-CarPlay. I haven't got any README set up yet. I'll get them done probably over the next couple of days. Uh, but once it's installed, you can use the API that it presents to you to, to embed this app however you wish. Um, a perfect example of that is the React CarPlay one. So if we go into some of the code for it. And if we go into the Electron app first, so the first bit where CarPlay gets created, so that's in main. Um, so we just create a, an instance of CarPlay, node CarPlay. Um, it's got a configuration that you send to it, so it's sending it a width and a height. Um, also a DPI, night mode, hand, all your standard stuff. A um, bit further down, we've got some event emitters that come out of uh, CarPlay. So one of them being whether the phone's plugged in or unplugged. We can also send events to CarPlay with this send touch. So the important one is obviously you're clicking, so where you're touching and when you're dragging. Um, that's done through this. Uh, and then the bottom one's just getting the plugged and unplugged event again. So what I've done now, I've installed my Jaguar app onto this test Raspberry Pi, so there's no no actual data coming through everything at the moment, it's just, just blank. Um, but I've added to the navigation bar down here the Apple CarPlay, so it's kind of a, an example of what you could do with it. Uh, so if we click on to the Apple CarPlay logo, you'll notice the bottom bar disappears. Um, just so we can keep it full screen. So if I plug the phone in now, and it should load up. We may get a little bug where we've got to unplug it and plug it back in, um, but we'll see. Okay, and there it is. There's Apple CarPlay running. I'll use the touch screen on the uh, on the Raspberry Pi for this. You can see it's fairly smooth, uh, definitely usable. At the moment, it's running with um, MPEG TS as the uh, the encoding and the decoding, which is far from ideal. It's a very old kind of way of doing it, but it does work. Um, hopefully, I can I can move it into something a bit more a bit more modern, and again, hopefully, with some hardware acceleration. Um, what I have presented on the uh, NPM package is if you click the manufacturer icon which is this one here um, it emits an event so I'm capturing that event and then I'm navigating back to the climate control page and it'll take me back there and then I can go back into CarPlay at the moment it, it relaunches the whole bit so I've got some work to do on that but it does come back up I think that's pretty much it for now so if anyone gets any issues with it, um, feel free to open them in GitHub. I say it's still super early, so no doubt there'll be quite a few. Um, but hopefully, it's of use to people.